guys i hope you're well and i hope you had a lovely easter weekend i miss you all so much um and can't wait to see you again but for now we are reading mr stink together by david williams and we're up to chapter three called the wanderer and so far chloe's met mr stink chloe's little girl and she has asked her dad if she can take some sausages sausages from her dinner plate and take them for mr stink's dog the duchess but she was teasing she was telling a little white lie because she actually wanted to give those sausages to mr stink to feed him so let's see what happens okay chapter three is the wanderer mr stink ate the sausages in an unexpectedly elegant manner first he took out a little linen napkin and tucked it under his chin Next, he took an antique silver knife and fork out of his breast pocket. And finally, he produced a dirty gold from china plate, which he gave to the Duchess to lick clean before he set down the sausages neatly upon it. Chloe stared at the cutlery and plate. It seemed like another clue to his past. Had he perhaps been a gentleman thief who crept into country houses at midnight and made off with the family silver? Do you have any more sausages? Mr Stink asked whilst his mouth was still full of sausage. No, just those eight, I'm afraid, replies Chloe. She stood at a safe distance from Mr Stink, so that her eyes wouldn't start weeping at the smell. The Duchess looked up at Mr Stink as he ate the sausages, with a heartbreaking longing, which suggested that all the love and beauty in the world was kept inside those two tubes of sausage meat. There you go, Duchess, said Mr Stink, slowly lowering half a sausage into his dog's mouth. The Duchess was so hungry that she didn't even chew. Instead, she swallowed it in half a millisecond before returning to her expression of sausage longing. Had any man or beast ever eaten a sausage so quickly? Chloe was half expecting a gentleman in a blazer and slacks with a clipboard and a stopwatch to appear and declare that the little black dog had set a new sausage-eating international world record. So, young Chloe, is everything fine at home? asked Mr Stink, as he let the Duchess lick his fingers clean of any remnant of sausage juice. I'm sorry, replied a befundled Chloe. I asked if everything was fine at home. If things were tickety-boo, I'm not sure you'd be spending your Sunday talking to an old vagabond like me. Vagabond? I don't like the word tramp, you see. It makes me think of someone who's a bit smelly. Chloe tried to conceal her surprise. Even the Duchess looked puzzled, and she doesn't even speak English, only dog language. I prefer vagabond, or maybe wanderer, said Mr Stink. The way he put it, thought Chloe, sounded almost poetic, especially the word wanderer. She would love to be a wanderer. She would wander all around the world if she could. Not say in this boring little town where nothing happened and nothing had happened the day before. There's nothing wrong at home. Everything's fine, said Chloe. Are you sure? asked Mr Stink, with the wisdom some people have that cuts right through you like a knife cuts through butter. Things were in fact not fine. At home for Chloe. She was often ignored. Her mother doted on Annabelle, probably because her youngest daughter was like a miniature version of her. Every inch of every wall in the house was covered with celebrations of Annabelle's infinite achievements. There were photographs of her standing smugly on winners' podiums and certificates, bearing her name in italic gold, trophies and medals engraved with winner and first place, or little creep. I made the last one up. The more Annabelle achieved, the more that Chloe felt like a failure. Her parents spent most of their lives providing a chauffeur service for Annabelle's out-of-school activities. Her schedule was exhausting to look at. And you can have a look at all of the schedule, the things that Annabelle does each day. It goes on for four pages. And it's things like 7pm, she goes cake baking class. 8pm she attends a lecture, she goes chef training, she goes to tennis, drama workshops, show jumping, dance lessons, oboe lessons. 
She's a very busy person. And that was just the weekdays. The weekends were when things really get busy for Annabelle. No wonder Chloe feels ignored. Well, I suppose things at home are... Ah, stammered Chloe. She wanted to talk to Mrs Dink. She really did, but she wasn't sure how. <gasps> Suddenly, there was a bong from the clock outside. Chloe gasped and looked at her watch. It was four o'clock. Mother made her do her homework until four o'clock. And from four o'clock until six o'clock, every day. Even in the school holidays, when she didn't have any work to do. Sorry, Mr Stink, I've got to go, she said. But she was secretly relieved. No one had ever asked how she felt before, and she was beginning to panic. Really, child? said Mrs Stink, looking disappointed. Yes, yes, I really need to get home. Mother will be furious if I don't get at least a C in maths next term. She sets me extra tests during the holidays. That doesn't sound like much of a holiday to me, said Mrs Stink. Chloe shrugged. My mum doesn't believe in holidays. She stood up. I hope you like the sausages, she said. They were scrumptious, said Mr Stink. Thank you. Unimaginable kindness. Chloe nodded and turned off and ran towards home. She took a shortcut so she'd make sure that she was back before Mother. Farewell, Mr Stink called after her softly. That was nice, wasn't it? Um, so next we'll be on to chapter four. So let's see what happens then. Bye bye, stay safe.